much to the satisfaction of the conspiracy theorists, the Justice Mukherjee Commission of Inquiry, JMCI, set up in 1999, by Government of India, concluded in 2005, that Netaji did not die in the plane crash at Taihoku. The ashes at Japanese temple in Tokyo, is not that of Netaji. And, that Netaji is dead. But, it failed to say, where else, when, and how Netaji died. Conducting investigations 55 to 60 years after the incident, the commission concluded, that there is no documented evidence that proves there was any plane accident, at Taihoku airport, on 18th August 1945. A detailed study of the JMCI report itself, and also when read along with declassified files, reveals, that its conclusions were based on many flawed assumptions. The flaws are brought out here. Serially first. And then. Those listed by the government in their action taken report, discussed and debated, in the parliament, in May and July 2006. That led to the rejection, of the JMCI report. However, all got asked to find out, how, when, and where, Netaji had died, the commission could not give the answer, on the circumstances, of Netaji's death. In his report, Justice Mukherjee was prudent to note, if really there was a plane crash, the news about the same, would have been published, in the then local daily. And, as a proof of this, no evidence is evidence, he cited, Central Daily News, which had carried no news of any plane crash, at Taihoku, in end August, 1945. Unfortunately, here was Justice Mukherjee's, first big mistake. He had assumed, Central Daily News, was a local daily, of Taihoku, in 1945. However, in reality, Central Daily News, was not a local daily of Taihoku in August 1945. The newspaper was the official newspaper, of the Chiang Kai-shek led Kuomintang, and was based in Chongqing. It became a local newspaper of Taipei, only after 1949, when the Kuomintang fled to Taiwan. Thus, it is clear, Justice Mukherjee had looked up a rowing newspaper, and had not found the news of any crash there. This fundamental flow, in turn, channelized him, to erroneous conclusion. In 1956, journalist Harin Shah, in his deposition to the Shah Nawaz Committee, had given names of two local newspapers, Taiwan Didishimpo, and Taiwan Nichiniche Shimbun, which, actually had published the news of Netaji's death, due to the plane crash. Japanese deponent Komatsu, mentioned in his letter, to the inquiry committee of 1956, that he came to know of the crash of the plane, from local newspaper of Taihoku, Taiwan Nichinishi Shimbu. According to Dr. Kang Kingyan, Director, Bureau of Health and Hygiene in Taipei, a small obituary notice appeared in the papers. Shah's testimony was certainly available to the commission. And yet, for inexplicable reasons, Justice Mukherjee, neither investigated these newspapers, nor even mentioned them. Perhaps the most dramatic misrepresentation of facts, is at page 52, of the JMCI report. There, Justice Mukherjee writes, as testified by Habibur Rahman to Shah Nawaz committee, the plane had nosedived, from a fairly high altitude, possibly over 12 to 14,000 feet. He concluded, Habibur was bluffing, because, if the plane had indeed fallen from a height of 12 to 14,000 feet, no one could have survived while the fact was, seven of the thirteen passengers had survived the crash. The problem with the JMCI's conclusion is again one of faulty input data. 
because never did Habiba testify that the plane nosedived from a height of 12 to 14,000 feet. So, where did this 12 to 14,000 feet come from? That takes us back to the 1956 report. And there, it is written in his testimony. Habiba had narrated that they were flying at 12 to 14,000 feet between Turin and Taihoku, and not after taking off from Taihoku. Sadly, for reasons best known to him, Justice Mukherjee, cherry picked this figure of 12 to 14,000 feet and pasted it onto the height of nose diving after takeoff from Taihoku. Worse still, he maligned Habiba of making out a story. JMCI noted that, in March 2003, the mayor of Taipei, in his reply to query by an Indian journalist wrote, there is no such records, in Taipei archives, of a plane crash in Taipei, on that day. But, what JMCI missed, is that Lin Lingsan, minister of the Taiwanese government, in a subsequent mail to the same journalist, dated 5th August 2003, had clearly stated, the precise retrocession date, by Republic of China, was on October 25th in 1945. Prior to that date, 25th October 1945, Japanese colonialists were still responsible, of not only military, but also civilian activities, in Taiwan. Unfortunately, after reviewing all handed over records, during the period from August 14th to 25th October 1945, there was no evidence shows that one plane had ever crashed, at Old Matsuma Airport, Taipei. It is obvious to even a layman, that the Taiwanese authorities, had explicitly stated, that their report was based solely on, handed over notes. And that, Japanese authorities had remained in control until 25th October 1945, that is far beyond 18th August, 45. They had no records of their own. Therefore, it may not have been proper, for Justice Mukherjee to conclude, against plane crash based on incomplete data. Absence of data, in a portion of records, cannot be construed as the plane crash never happened. There were just two persons, who were eyewitness, to both death and cremation, of Netaji. One was Habiba Rahman, and the other was interpreter, Juichi Nakamura. Both deposed to the Shah Nawaz committee, in 1956, that Netaji was cremated on 20th August 1945. Habiba further said that, he collected the ashes, on 21st August. Dr. Yoshimi, the hospital doctor, testified, that the body was taken away from the hospital, on the 20th. While the death certificate, supposedly signed by Dr. Yoshimi, has never been retrieved, the cremation register of Taihoku municipality does record that four males were cremated in the days between 19 to 21 August 45, that is, the period when Netaji is said to have been cremated. Thus, it would have been most prudent of Justice Mukherjee to find out the details of these four individuals. Inexplicably, and in another example of investigative shoddiness, Justice Mukherjee obtained details of some other male, Ichiro Okura, who had been cremated on 22nd August 1945, two days after Netaji, after dying on 19th, a day after Netaji. How did he get this name, Ichiro Okura? He had, now, used her in Shah's report, whose crucial information on local newspapers, he had ignored. All this does raise the question, whether the commission was looking for, only those leads, that can go against the previous two inquiries conclusions. In this case her ins. In his built up to negate the plane crash incident, Justice Mukherjee, summarizes the chapter, stating. Netaji's death therein, and his cremation, was engineered by the Japanese army authorities, including the two doctors, and Habiba Rahman and then aired on 23rd August 1945, through a statement, prepared by Sri S. A. Aya, 
at the dictation of the aforesaid authorities to give imprimatur of the INA to the death news of Netaji. However, he did not enlighten the readers as to how could the defeated and surrendered Japanese authority sitting in Tokyo in those days of limited communication after their defeat and in the midst of the most chaotic period of Japanese history had ensured that two Japanese doctors stationed in Taihoku. INA officer Habiba Rahman on the move from Bangkok to Saigon to Turane to Taihoku and INA officer Aya stranded in Saigon could all become part of such a plan, execute it with precision, and then maintain their supposed secret, even when facing several investigations, years and decades later. Remember, the atom bombs had wiped out two of their cities a week back, a coup had been attempted, and several senior officers and ministers had committed suicide, leading to administrative confusion all over Southeast Asia. Wars. What evidence supported this? And what was the motive? Alas. JFCI gave no answer. In a letter dated 13th August 2003, the Home Ministry authorized the JMCI to ask for anthropological evaluation for determining the feasibility of DNA test of the ashes stored at the Renkoji Temple, Tokyo. Some experts did advise that less charred bone pieces, if present in the ashes, might be useful for a DNA test. Accordingly, Justice Mukherjee wrote, he wanted active cooperation of the temple authorities. The request was forwarded to the chief priest of Renkoji by the External Affairs Ministry and on letters dated 25th April and 31st May 2005, Ministry of External Affairs informed the JMCI that the chief priest had no objection to a DNA test on the remains in his custody. His only requests were, he would keep a portion of the remains in the temple, and that, in recognition of their dedication, in keeping the ashes for 60 years, his name, and that of his father, who had been chief priest before him, would be carved on the plate on the pedestal of Netaji's statue in India. But strangely, even after being informed that the chief priest had given his consent for the DNA test, the JMCI wrote another letter to MBA on 20th May 2005 to persuade the temple authorities to accord their consent to selection of potentially less charred bone pieces from the casket. The MBA apparently took no cognizance of this letter. The extended tenure of the commission was nearing completion, and it was wound up in the following months. And, in his report, Justice Mukherjee concluded, rather unjustly, that he could not proceed in getting the DNA test done, on account of the temple authority's reticence. A mystery, a very pertinent one. Why Justice Mukherjee? who was very meticulous in visiting all the archives in Russia, never queried anything from the Japanese government, especially when Netaji was under their care. When last seen, he made no attempt to access the five Netaji files, which were still being kept as secret by the Japanese government. He interviewed just one witness in Japan, and came out of that island. when the report was tabled in Parliament. Short duration discussions, under Rule 193, were held in Parliament, on 18th May, and 26th July 2006. Prabodh Panda, CPI, and Subroto Bose, forward bloc, made 30 minutes and more than one and half hour speeches, respectively. Panda's 9 point and Bose's 23 point questions were replied to by government, 13 parliamentarians, three from CPI, two from SP and RJD each, one each from CPIM, AIFB, BSP, BJD, BJP and SS, participated in the discussion. Twelve number general questions were answered. In addition, the government prepared the action taken report, ATR, and placed the same in the parliament, 
on 7 August 2006. The gist of the 26-page findings on JMCI report is as follows. 1. No source supports the Commission's claim that the aeroplane had attained a height of 12 to 14,000 feet before nose diving. 2. The charge leveled by the Commission that Dr. Yoshimi had manufactured a death certificate in 1988 which showed the name of Netaji is not valid. The evidence provided by Dr. Yoshimi to the earlier investigations was found to be consistent and it is not possible to believe that a person such as Dr. Yoshimi would manufacture a death certificate merely to put the commission on a rowing track. 3. The JMCI did not investigate into the antecedents of Ichiro Okura, in whose name the cremation certificate was issued by the Japanese. That Nekagi and Okura were not the same person could be acceptable only if the commission could establish that there was a real person of that name. 4. The commission has not given sufficient reasons grounds for coming to the conclusions that Nekagi is dead and did not die in the said plane crash. 5. No doubt, people living beyond 100 years are very few, but it is not rare. Unless there is solid reason, ground, evidence, such a conclusion can be termed as conjecture, imaginary, and that cannot stand logic. 6. The commission has claimed that Nekaji might have disappeared from Taipei, as that was the place where he and Habiba Rahman were last found together. But he could have made the exit from Turane also, where they had passed one night together. Therefore, in the absence of adequate justification backed by cogent reason, such conclusions make the report fragile and frail. If Nekaji did not die in the plane crash, where has he disappeared? He just could not vanish in thin air. It was well nigh impossible for someone like Nekaji to remain hidden in some corner of Asia or elsewhere, running away from his cherished dream of freeing India from the alien rulers. Under no stretch of imagination can it be said that he was covered and seeing that the Japanese were surrendering and the Russians were aligning with the Allied forces, he would give up the fight for independence, leaving his comrades in the lurch and live a secluded indolent life in some corner of this planet. This simply does not fit in with the fiery and indomitable character of Nekaji. Thus, at the end of the several deliberations in Parliament, on 7 August 2006, the Home Minister Shivraj Patil explained that the JMCI had not answered its primary mandate, that is, where, when, and how Nekaji died. In addition, glaring shortcomings had been exposed in the report during parliamentary verification. Hence, after taking due care of all the observations, the government would have to reject JMCI findings. It is observed that in most cases, people prefer to go by hearsay of the type they like to hear. Some derive pleasure by wrongly believing that he was declared war criminal. Very few bokeh are to delve into details in search of facts. In our times, this is how the so-called WhatsApp University flourishes. Thus, it is no wonder that the rejection of JMCI findings led to another round of myth-making. Till today, many people erroneously hold the view that Government of India rejected the findings of JMCI without giving any explanation. Today, some people believe he did not die in the plane crash. They say he escaped to the Soviet Union but was captured, put in a gulag, and killed by Stalin. Others opine he returned to India and lived as a holy man, incognito, till 1985. And there are those who believe he is still alive at age 123. But such beliefs are a thing of the past when we were not privy to secret files. In 2015, the West Bengal government released all secret files related to Netaji from the state archives. The central government followed suit 
and declassified the remaining 304 files on Netaji in January 2016, bringing up the total Netaji files to 2,324, a process they started in 1997. The government subsequently declared in parliament on 2nd March 2016 that there are no more classified Netaji files in its archives. From the files, we now know that, between 1945 and 1974, 10 investigations were conducted by the British Army, the Allied forces based in Japan, Government of British India, Governments of Japan and Taiwan, Government of India, and also certain individuals. All of them had concluded that Netaji had passed away on the night of 18th August 1945, after being grievously injured at the aeroplane crash at Taihoku Airport. This is also in agreement with all major biographies of Netaji. And thus, the controversy on Netaji's death stands resolved.